Hey everyone, Andy here. Uh, today I'm back in the lab with the Sony F3. We're talking about the RGB and S-Log upgrade. Uh, this is an upgrade we've been talking about for a while. We had some clips up on the internet, uh, but I really wanted to show you uh, what it can do in terms of dynamic range uh, and also just talk about what it actually is. Uh, so uh, the upgrade you can purchase is an upgrade, an, activate, an activation you put in there and it just sort of turns these functions on and it enables two things. Uh, one would be uh, the uh, RGB or 444 output of the camera over dual link, which is these two connectors, or you can make that into 3G for just one connector if you prefer. Uh, you have a, that, that, that you can send to a uh, recorder like Sony's uh, new uh, recorder or to a CineDeck or to a Gemini 444 for, for, for uh, RGB recording potential. Very nice. Uh, also, it enables S-Log. S-Log is a dynamic range mode in the camera that gives you the most possible. Uh, it is not a raw recording mode. It is essentially a very uh, powerful gamma curve, a logarithmic gamma curve. Uh, you can get a lot out of the sensor this way. It's actually designed, the S-Log is designed for this particular sensor, in this case, uh, to give the most possible out of it. Now, you may have seen these uh, percentages uh, related to dynamic range in this camera and others. They'll say, well, uh, S-Log is an 800% dynamic range mode. Uh, what that means is they're saying, well, compared to a 709 video, which we'll call 100%, this is eight times more information that we're recording, that we're kept gathering. So 800% is the case for S-Log versus the internal cine gammas that you have in the camera, which are rated around 460%. So they're less dynamic range. So going to 800, we should get more. Uh, so to check that out and see what that actually is doing here, the F3 point out the, my uh, DSC Labs chart with the leader scopes in the background there. And we have the set to Cine 1 gamma curve at the moment. And we'll see that we have about 12 stops, 12 and a half stops of light. Uh, we've seen this before at the testing initially. And there it is, uh, you know, just with Cine 1, actually set to my JR45 Cine uh, picture profile that you may have downloaded off of the website. And now if I turn on S-Log, I'll see an improvement in that just by turning it on. So I'm going to go in the men menus here, dual link, Gamma select and select it to 1.5 gig. That's the that's a single link, or in this case it's dual link because it's 444 and S log. Turn that on, and it is enabling uh, 444 out of these two outputs, and, and it's enabling S log gamma mode. Uh, right away, if you see on my uh, scope there, I've actually gone from 12 and a half to about 13 and a half stops. So that's that's the improvement. That's what you're getting, just like that. Right now, I am actually outputting that signal over. 422. So a lot of people ask, can I record S-Log over 422? And the answer is yes, of course. Uh, dual link and 444 will give you better color separation and it's going to give you, and it's actually intended for S-Log use, of course. But you can record this output uh, in S-Log if I want to. But to do so, I have to disable all the built-in lookup tables, uh, which are there to enable me to monitor on set not in S-Log. So I'm basically taking the monitor out with S-Log just set on and recording that instead. Uh, that's fine, just know the difference, is that when you turn that off, you lose the lookup table potential of the camera. And also when you turn S-Log on, the camera is sort of simplified in some ways. Picture profiles are no longer available and you can only have either one of two white balances, 3200 or 5600. So it's somewhat limiting in that capacity, uh, but it's very nice to have uh, the sort of simplified camera. And S-Log, in terms of dynamic range potential, is very impressive. So we'll go over the LUTs in a minute, but first let's just look at this curve again. 13 and a half stops uh, right there. And you see how flat that is. Basically this is a very flat image uh, designed again to give the most potential off the sensor. So you really do need to do some color correction on this in post, but that's what it's, made, that's what it's there for. Uh, now, if I would like to uh, uh, record this output to uh, a, a Key Pro Mini or a uh, sound device, this Pix240, or any of the any bit any of the device, it's a great option to have. But it should be a 10-bit recording device because if you really maximize and take advantage of S-Log, I need to be in 10-bit. So uh, right now, if I recorded on the internal S by S, I would be getting S-Log and S by S at 8-bit, and that's not the best option because 8-bit is basically you're truncating a lot of data off, and it's not a really good recording option for S-Log. There's a reason why the internal gammas are sort of designed to give you what 8-bit can handle. So here I would want to go to some kind of external recorder, 422 or 444. Now, uh, if S-Log is a little bit much for me in terms of correction and post, I could choose to record the LUTed output. Um, of course, the LUTs are intended just for on-set displays, et cetera, to make sure to see how things will look 
and I'll, when, after corrected, but I could choose to go to my S-Log LUT select here, which is just down from there, and turn on one of four preset lookup tables. Basically, these lookup tables are designed to, to give me a similar amount of output, at least the first three, uh, but with some sort of bump on it in terms of uh, either contrast or, uh, or, or, or low light adjustment to give me more or less, basically make the image look a little prettier. So the first one you see here, if I go to P1, is 709-800. So what that's saying is it's trying to give me something that looks like 709, but it's mapping it over the entire 800% dynamic range mode. If you count the stops, I still have the same amount of stops, 13 and a half, but the highlights are falling off faster. You see it falling off fast there. My gray point has been bumped up, so I have basically uh, something that looks a little, the midtones look a little brighter. It falls off faster. The low, the low end's pushed up. This is in a, pr a pretty good gamma mode. I, could, I would consider using it and even recording it in a, in a, in a situation where I wanted the range, but I was, uh, but, but I needed the, uh, the sort of low end bumped a little bit for an easier push through color correct. So this is, an, this is a good option. It does look pretty nice on a monitor. The next thing I have is these two hyper gammas that are set up, P2 and P3. Uh, the way that this coding works, just so you know, uh, is that the first letter stands for, the first two letters, HG, stand for hyper gamma. The next number stands, stands for the percentage, 800%, that's 800 there. The next two, 09, refer to the white point, basically that this goes to 109% white, which is what we want. And then the last part, G40 and G33, stands for the gray point. So in P2, if we decode that, we're saying we, got, we have the same dynamic range, 800%, uh, goes to 109, and we have a gray point of 40. See it on the scopes there. That what's happened is it's basically and similar to 7 to 9. It's it's pushed up my gray point a little higher. It's a little quicker fall off to the low lights, but not as fast as 709. Gives me some gives me a good amount of range, but uh, it's a little quicker through post. And then finally, the, on, the, on the same note, uh, the 33 percent there does a similar thing, but has a lower gray point, giving me more data above that point. So it's again m more like a daylight look. So if I was going to compare this to the Cine curves, uh, in this case, the uh, P3 would be like Cine 1 and P2 would be like Cine 3, uh, sp being that P1 is more for, or P2, excuse me, uh, the 40% gray point is more like a, an indoor sort of look. And then the 33% gray point, 1 and P3, is more of a bright day look. So these are like an, a lighter version of S-Log. It could be a good option to record, and also is nice to have on set, of course. And then finally, I go down from there to P4, which is a 709, 180% mode. Basically, it's a lot lower percentage of the sensor. It is giving me a very quick fall off into the highlights, as you can see. I lose a lot of stops. The idea here is that you're on set and you want to give someone a, uh, a nice looking image that looks very similar to what they might see as a finished product. Just be aware that this is not something you really want to record. It's actually less data uh, than you would get out of the camera. So this is just more, again, an on-set sort of look. Uh, below that, I have a bunch of user, user uh, lookup tables that I can assign. I have to build these up. So we'll talk about that in one minute. But um, that's, that's, those are our settings. Again, just to go over 709-800, which is P1, good for uh, sort of lower light studio work. Uh, and I want to get a nice look out of that. The next two hyper gammas, uh, one, uh, number, number two there is a sort of an outdoor, I mean, it's a sort of an indoor medium tone look uh, that I want to get a nice uh, range for. And number three there would be again for outside uh, bright day where I want to have more range in my highlights. And number four is uh, just a really, just really standard video. So those are the settings that I have available. Of course, I can just turn those off and record S-Log and go through post with that. Totally recommend that in, most in many cases, just know that you have all of these options. So that's it for this particular video. In the next part of this series, we're going to do a couple of videos here. I'm going to go outside, show you some examples outside and inside of what actually S-Log is doing, some, some practical application. And in the third part, we'll do some lookup table design. We'll actually go through and make some lookup tables with Sony software and load it back into the camera. That's it for now. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.